Hi, and welcome to the digital job site where the boards are straight, the weather's great, and there really is a board stretcher. You might question whether the weather's really great at the digital job site because there's fog showing in this image, but we'll just shut that off so that our so that my tagline is still valid. Wait till the fog shuts off. This video is the the video portion of a blog post I'm titling Super Size Me Working with Details in SketchUp and the purpose is to show how to get complete geometry for small detailed objects. I'll shut off the sun here too and zoom in and look at the look at the poles on these cabinets and you can see that uh, this one is a kind of like an oil rub bronze type finish and these are completed little poles. I, I used a, um, a high facet count on the circles for the follow me tool to get a nice smooth knob but it, it really you, you need to really want to do that because it really increases the geometry and slows the process down especially with a slower computer like mine. But if you've tried to work with small turned objects with SketchUp using the follow me tool you'll know that they don't come out like this when you start off, there's, they'll generally have holes in the geometry depending on the, uh, the shape of the arcs you use to create such hardware. So I'm going to go through the process I use to get these knobs to look complete like this and then I'll also do a second video showing how to create quickly create these uh, raised, raised panel looking door frames and drawer fronts different edges. This is a beveled edge. I've got a, a round over edge here and then this is kind of a sculpted out router um, look here and this achieving this this fit of this routed detail in a in a drawer front is a little bit of a challenge in SketchUp for the same reason when you blend these arcs together with the follow me tool it leaves out a bunch of little gaps in the corner so if you want to look want these routed details to look realistic, you need to go through. Use the I use the same process as I'll show you to make complete poles. But rather than lug all this geometry around, I'm just going to close this model and open another one, and go through the process I use for creating those little knobs. And we'll just do it in this a new a new window here. I just created a, a block here. Make it a group so it doesn't mess with our geometry. But these are the steps for creating a small piece of hardware. You're probably pretty familiar with this, but for those of you that might not be, we'll go through the steps real quick. I'm just going to throw some guidelines down here. And I'm going to say we want our pole to be one inch. Uh, I have a one inch protrusion and let's make it uh, an inch and three quarters in diameter. So I've just drawn the radius there as seven eighths and then 1.75. Okay. I guess I didn't need that second one. Actually, after all, we'll just go with the radius because we're going to use the follow me tool. So this little box uh, represents uh, this is the overall size of our pole and I'm just taking the arc tool here to create a profile for this little piece of hardware and I want to be careful there not to go beyond this dotted line and put a funny dimple in the top of our pole which I really don't want. Then I'm just clicking arcs with the arc tool and when the arc line clicks to this teal color I know that the arc is tangent. That's kind of what I want for for a smooth looking pole. I'm going to create some geometry that might not be all that realistic just to further emphasize the, the method and process here. There we go. I just created the arc portion of this knob profile and I'm just going to create a solid face there. That'll end up being our the profile for our knob. And 
So with that, I'm going to move this away. Move it out here in the space. Like that move. Move this out into space. And then create a, a circular follow me path. I've grabbed the circle tool. I put it on this vertical face so it's nice to have this box here to, to reference from. Once I've got it in the green axis, I hold the shift key down. It'll maintain that orientation. I click the circle at the center of our pole and then bring it out to our tangent point. Oops. Carried away. Use the zoom extends tool to get to find ourselves here. I want to get right to the end of that straight line. And so there we have a knob profile and a path. We'll delete this circle. I just double click this, select everything, it inverts the selection. So the circle is highlighted in blue. That gives us the path for the follow me tool click that on our profile and it'll generate profile for our knob and in this instance it only left out this funny little dot in the middle I think uh, I'm just going to go back a little bit and change the geometry of our of our pole make it a little more radical so that there'll be more gaps to kind of show this show the the problem a little more clearly. Put a tighter radius here. Let's go with that. Put a tight radius in here. When working with the small parts, some the tighter the geometry, the the more difficulty the program has in um, getting the job done as far as making it complete. Let's see. This is going to be a goofy little knob, <laughs> um, but I hope it'll further demonstrate the problem of the gaps in the geometry. Let's see, I'm going to get right to the end of that arc. There we go. Just filling this in so we get a, a profile for a knob that we can use for uh, set up and use the follow me tool. Okay, there's our profile. And then I'm going to grab the circle tool for our path. I index it on the on the um, the surface here, once again, hold the center point, zoom in to get our tangent point here. There we go. Let's see if this knob will come out a little with a few more gaps in it. There's our profile. Go through that to get the path for the follow me tool, and then we're going to click this geometry and see what our little pull comes out like. And that's a better example. I'm going to reverse the faces here. This is a better example of what happens. You can see now there's a, a hole missing in the top and underneath, zoom extends here, underneath there's uh, there's another, it just left out that stem of the pole. So that's what happens typically when you're using the follow me tool on a small part. And to avoid this problem, the simplest way that I know is to, I just backed up until I end up with our profile and our path. Select that geometry, use the scale tool, and I grab one of these corners and get it so that the pole is enlarging. And then I'll just type in 10 and it increases that, that pole. Everything about it increases it 10 times. And now if we do the process again, See, grab the circle, that's our path, and run the profile. Because it's enlarged, I'm not quite sure why it's some software thing, but the knob comes out complete. You get a complete pull with all the parts in. I'm going to reverse the faces again. And now, 
for whatever reason. Ask some software guy what the real deal is, but um, once the geometry is complete, I'll select it again, grab that scale tool now by grabbing the corner and typing in 0.1. I reduce this back down to the size we started off with. And there's a lot of surfaces in that geometry. My computer's a little bit slow, so it takes a little while to render that back down. But once we do, you can see that we zoom back in on that pole. Now it's complete in its actual size. So that's kind of a handy little deal. Um, while we've got this, I'm going to take this circle, right click, and grab, I'm going to select just the circle here. It's giving me fits for some reason. Now I right click on that and put a point in the center, and then I'll just put a handle on this, which is um, a line. Uh, three quarters of an inch long, uh, and that'll end up being a handle for this pole later on. Delete that face. Now we'll group this geometry, and you could make that a component too if you think you're going to be changing things in the future. But um, basically, that gets us our pole, and I want to make this so it'll fit on the front of this box. I drug it with the middle handle and type in minus one. It gives me it flips it around. I could use the rotate tool to do the same thing. I was just doing it that way because I'm kind of lazy. Um, so anyways, there's the there's the pole as it would sit on, on a vertical face. I'm just going to move this around by grabbing that little handle. Use zoom extents to find ourselves there. Now I can move the knob down. I get it to sit right on that surface. I can just grab our little handle, move in the direction I want to go, which is in the green axis, and then type three quarters of an inch. It puts it right on the surface. So that's a pull uh, created by supersizing it, using the follow me tool, and then shrinking it back down. I'll do one more thing here and use a metal material to color our little pole. And you can see what happens is it comes out with all these little facets. It's, it's putting that material on every single facet that comprises that material group, but that doesn't give a very realistic looking pole. So to get around that problem, I'll back up a step. I'll jump into our cube geometry here and use the same finish on that. Same finish on this. And then I've right-clicked that. I'm going to go down to the texture and I'm going to use the projected or the position tool. It gives you this screen. And I want to reduce the texture of that pattern so it looks a little finer. Ah, that was too much because now I'm going to end up with seams. Let's just redo that again. And ah, let's see, I, I'm going to use this other. Um, let's use this rusted metal finish. There we go. And then I'm going to change the graining of that pattern, if you will, a little bit, fine it down a little bit, and then let's edit the color and darken it up a little bit so it looks a little more oil rubbed, bronzish, if you will. And the other thing, that's the other thing about this, I say that that texture, I clicked this projected. So now when we go into our pull, if I just Take the select tool, grab the eyedropper, grab this, and put it on our knob. It still does that faceting thing, even though it's a projected texture. And the way around that little problem is to go into the group, select all the surfaces, and then grab the eyedropper tool, click on a projected texture panel, and put it on the pole. 
and now it it changes the appearance of that texture and I don't really like the way this came out because it's projecting from this side so we're going to back up a few steps and as I work through this process it'll help you to understand oops I'm going to back up so that and unproject this texture so we're just going to put this metal rough on there and when you work through these steps uh, you'll encounter all these little issues like that one and I need to put this on the front face there's this metal texture on this face now we're going to project it until we want it projected right click again position this to shrink the graining down here a little bit and then we're going to edit the color a little bit and see what we can get. Kind of make it look more oil rubbed bronzish. Probably never seen oil rubbed bronze that color, but let's pretend that that's what it looks like. Okay, now when we go through this process, use the eyedropper, select eyedropper tool, grab this surface, and when we paint the knob this way, blends right into our surface. I'm going to clear this texture off of here. Okay, so now you have a pole that's complete with a texture that's projected across the front of it. Those are the steps and some of the part of the process for working through the variables when you're doing this process. But what you'll end up with is, is a pole that's complete with a a more realistic looking texture to it. If we put the shadow on there you can get an idea of what that pole will look like. So uh, that video got kind of long but there's a lot of a lot of these steps and if I don't cover them in the video you'll probably bang your head into them like I did and maybe by including all my mistakes in the video it'll help you avoid them. So I'm going to wrap up this video at this point. I'll do another one, a second video on the Super Size Me topic showing how to create some of those door and drawer fronts pretty quickly to represent a more realistic looking cabinet for a project you're working on. Thanks for tuning in to the Digital Job Site.